Hey, what's going on, friends and family? My name is Skylint, and I'm back again with a top 10. I've been enjoying my PS4. I've been playing a lot of the Horizon Zero Dawn expansion at that Monster Hunter world. Been jamming out with Bloodborne with a bro. But a lot of you guys, of course, might be looking at a PS4 because of its freaking free library. A lot of games on the PS4 are free. And I did this list last year. It did okay. Let's hopefully we can get like, I don't know, a hundred likes, a million subscribers on this video, all the YouTube stuff. Click the bell for it tell when I go live streaming because I do often stream from my PS4 because there is a lot of cool games to play and jam and play with you guys specifically from the Discord. So if you guys are looking to get a console that has a lot of games immediately on it, you're immediately going to be able to jump in and jam to some cool stuff. That is the PS4. They've specifically tried to get a lot of free to play games and a lot of them are pretty good. Now, it's not all of them, but a lot. And here's a list of probably the ones that you're going to want to play. So if you want to know my picks, let's do it. Top 10 free to play games on PS4. All right, guys, at number 10, I'm going to put the game Cross Out. Now, this is going to be a vehicular combat game that maybe at first glance looks like something like Twisted Metal, Vigilante 8. I don't know if you guys got nostalgia goggles like I do for those titles, but it also mixes it with this sort of Robocraftian sort of theme of being able to build up your vehicles. Now, I played it back in the alpha, and then it was more Twisted Metal, less Robocraft, and now it's way more Robocraft or Besieged or, you know, one of those games where you really, like, make up, like, a, a big vehicle or it, it gets really ridiculous. It's more like that now. So I think Cross Out is still more down to earth than Robocraft, like literally, but at the same time, it's becoming more and more uproarious and ridiculous. So yeah, you can play Cross Out on PS4 as well as PC. It is going to be a free to play title on both. That's not always the case though. Robocraft, its competitor, isn't free to play on console. So that's weird. They, they did this weird thing where they launched as a, a buy to play game. So yeah, one of the more silly games on this list, but I think that's exactly what you're looking for. Something quick, clean, <laughs> and something to get dirty with, uh, with some friends and family for free. All right, dudes, number nine is going to be Trove. Now, Trove, I used to put so highly on MMO lists or just free to play games list, period. But it's going to be a little bit lower because things have changed. But I think the core identity of the game is still intact. Now, a lot of people were asking like for like a superhero y, you know, kind of cartoony and somewhat like safe for children type of MMO. You know, it's really blastuous in your face. It's it's really, you know, ridiculous. That's going to be Trove. You want to play this game. You can have lots of different weird classes. I mean, you're like throwing candy. You got like a, you know, like a dragon warlock person, dude. You have like a headless spearman. A lot of very strange gameplay styles that are very simplistic, but at the same time, mechanically, like you're jumping around, you're flippity flopping, you're not just double or triple jumping, but like quadruple, like times 12 jumping Kaioken insanity. And there's a lot of interesting platforming in the game, you know, aim based content, and it can actually get difficult later on. There is quite a bit of grind in this game, though. Again, something that puts it a little bit lower on the list. But if you want something they can always come back to, always have fun with anybody, anywhere, I think Trove might be your game. Next up on the list, we got Dungeon Defenders 2. One thing that I really loved about the original was the class dynamics. And in Dungeon Defenders 2, you could say, I think it goes a little bit above and beyond. Now it's like identical classes. They're just kind of expanded just a little bit here because you now have like a moba ishy kind of spell list uh, at the bottom there. Uh, but you do still have like, you know, your tower defense building. It's Dungeon Defenders. You got to defend those dungeons, dudes. But it's a little bit more in your face uh, for this action RTS. I think it's a little bit more action packed. Also, I really appreciate the graphics, really clean, a little bit more tasteful than the original, in my opinion. And I think that this is way more approachable as well. Now, you do have a difficulty selector, so don't worry if you're going to have like your little cousins or your kids jump into this game. That's awesome. And I just want to say I do applaud it for being free to play. Now, there has been a couple other competitors directly in this space. But Dungeon Defenders 2 is my pick, especially because my love of the original. But I just want to say I love free to play co-op games because if I want to just jam with someone else, which is the point of a co-op game, it's just super easy if it's free. Dungeon Defenders 2 is definitely my pick for free tower defense game. Moving on, though, number seven, we have War Thunder. This title is something that I'm just getting into currently. Now, I played like back in press access and it was neat. It was just planes then. But now it's kind of grown 
to be a little bit more mixed combat. So you you are gonna have combat where you start as a tank and then occasionally you go into a plane and then like, I guess vice versa in some stuff. I don't know what all it entails entirely. Again, I'm just getting into it, but like even though I'm just now getting back into it, like the graphics look really great. The controls are pretty freaking fantastic actually on PC or otherwise. And I'm really appreciating it. I know there's some other vehicular combat games out there, like Cross Out, that are really weird and different. But if you want something that is more sincere in some ways, and it's still an arcade game, but it's more simulated. It's it's more kind of serious. And if you're looking for that, there are still some games even in that direct competition. But I'm going to have to say War Thunder is the game, especially because it's more encompassing. Where in other titles, you might have to do World of Tanks and then play World of Warplanes and then play World of Warships. But this is just, hey, War Thunder. Thunder. It's all in one package. Let's jam. Next on the list, I'm putting Paladins. Now, if you watch me, you know I have a love-hate relationship with this game, but I think it's going to be more love from now on. However, it's lower on this list, despite probably being one of the better, more popular free-to-play games, again, even though I have a lot of complaints about it, it's just, it's because it's a shooter. And shooters, you know, and consoles, it's a little bit awkward depending on the game type. But Paladins does make it pretty comfortable, I have to say, uh, to actually jump into the game. But it's very much an emulation of Overwatch, which is a competitive, you know, almost pseudo arena shooter. Like things move so fast and Paladins can as well. Paladins is really vertical. A lot of characters are blinking all over the place and playing with the controller is just a little bit awkward. But I think Paladins kind of works, so that's why it's a little bit higher on the list, but at the same time a little bit lower. It's in this weird vague area, and I think some other shooters are designed a little bit better uh, with console more in mind, and that's why they are more further up on the list, and Paladins is down here. But absolutely, Paladins at its core is a silly, comical game, and if you just want to jam to the colors being thrown into your face and your eyeballs, then fine, Paladins is your game. Alright, next up though, we got Smite, halfway on the list here. Smite works a little bit better with the controllers because it's not vertical, like literally. I mean, you might see some characters jump or fly in the air, but it's, it's, it's really not vertical. It is a third person view action combat MOBA, and there were some other titles that were trying to claim that. Uh, we had Gigantic, which was also on Xbox. We had Paragon, which was on consoles, PS4, and they didn't work out. But Smite has really stood its ground. Uh, Smite has shown who the king of the castle is, and it, yeah. In the end, man, it's it's really just as simple as that. It's just Smite was the best, is the best, I think, in terms of speed, in terms of complexity, actually. And you might say that it draws a lot from other, uh, like, MOBAs and stuff, but the way it's actually translated into its third-person camera is far more unique than those other titles. Though Gigantic, ooh, I do miss you, baby. Mm. But Smite uh, has just had such a consistent player base, has had consistent updates, has really had that consistent uh, eSports scene as well. And even though it's such a silly game, they have, yeah, they, they've been doing consistent tournaments and at the same time doing those silly game modes, you know, the, even the PvE modes uh, that just really keep it alive. So the hype has been kept alive. Other games can't say that. And that's why it's just by default being slapped on this list. But it's it, legit. It's a good game. Regardless, even when those games are alive, I'd still put Smite above them. Okay, well, moving through. Number four, we have Terra. This is brand new though, okay? So I'm putting this on here kind of like with a little bit of trust that things are gonna be some ironed out. Okay, I'm, I think I think this is safe, maybe not. Anyways, Terra's a really interesting game, but of course, throughout this top 10, I've been doing like disclaimers first. Okay, Terra is a grind. It's really, it's not like Black Desert Online grind where it's like, that's just the game. It's the leveling, okay? Like you're one through whatever. It, it's so boring, it's not good. It's very repetitive. It makes no sense. There's no charm whatsoever in this game. And it, it just, it's it just random. It's just chaos. Until you finally get into the end game, that is where Terra comes to life. That is when it's like, whoa, that it's a really insane, good game. The dungeons are definitely challenging. Now I had a max level uh, Lancer back in the day, uh, but I really only played it because I was given a max rank for press access if I had to actually grind, oh man, dude, I think I had to like level 10 and I was like, nope, can't do it. So if you can't, I understand that. But if you do, if you do go through with it, uh, I really think tanking is fun in Terra and uh, maybe even healing a little bit. It's an action combat MMO that's debatably more action packed than any others. That's kind of its stand of fame. So on PS4, I think the controls definitely fit. I played with it on a controller on PC. I think it works. So hopefully whenever you guys get access to it, it's gonna work for you and hopefully it works for everyone. But 
Uh, then again, it's a big grind. Not everyone loves MMOs, but in consideration to PS4 having a lot of free-to-play MMOs, I think I'm gonna have to put Terra as the tippity top of that specific genre. Hopefully you guys agree. All right, number three, we got Warframe. Yeah, no, Warframe, uh, I think some people was expecting this to be number one or something. On PC, probably, maybe a little bit. It's a pretty freaking good, uh, cool free-to-play game. I do have actually some issues with its free-to-play model. It's not all rainbows and sunshine, but overall, I think we can say it's fair, at least. At the very bare minimum, Warframe is a fair free-to-play game, which is something that I've kind of danced around with a couple of these titles. But if you're looking for a game that is grind oriented, that has just infinite content, essentially, that you can always come to and jam with other people, Warframe is always going to have something and it technically will be fair, at least. You're not going to see anything that's uproariously pay to win or anything like that. But I think uh, we know what Warframe is, right? Do I have to describe this? It's ninjas in space. But what I do need to describe is how it works with controllers. It's fine enough. It really is. It's going to work good. Now, Warframe's always been optimized, actually, so it's going to look good. It's going to play good. And with a controller, it's just fine. I think, though, it doesn't make my number one because on PC, it's still a shooter, right? And on PC, you're, it moves so fast, it's so ridiculous, and there's so many weird weapons that I don't believe a controller can handle every single weapon perfectly just like you would on PC. So that's the only reason it's not as high up, because Warframe does move so crazy fast, but there's a lot of builds and there's a lot of customization in Warframe, so it's very high on the list because, yeah, you can build and play around your controller. But then again, I think you might miss a little bit, so that's why it's only number three. Though I think if it was cross-play, then it would probably instantly get at least number two. So yeah, that'd be nice. Now on to number two, which I really thought about putting at number one, but it's a game that I don't have much time with personally, so I guess I'll slap it at number two here. We got Brawlhalla. This is the uh, Smash-like game, and it's kind of hard to say Smash-like because I feel like that's its own genre right now. Brawlhalla is a platform fighter where, yes, it was inspired by Smash, but every other platform fighter basically is really more of a clone of Smash, where Brawlhalla kind of made itself its own thing with the fact that you have weapons that drop in, drop out. You have this art style and this dynamic that is very vertical and very different, which I mean, a platform fighter already is vertical and a very different fighter. But Brawlhalla, even from that, separated itself even more, which I really got to give it applause for. Not all of that, but it's free to play. A lot of other platform fighters are freaking not, and they're expensive, especially with their DLC, Rivals of Aether, looking at you. But Brawlhalla is clean. I think it just got bought up by freaking Ubisoft as well. They might be publishing it now, so we can expect more tournaments, bigger stuff coming from that. And it's the most popular one by far, aside from like literally Smash. So if you're looking for a platform fighter that isn't freaking Smash, I think Brawlhalla is probably the best bet. Now we have our number one obvious Fortnite. We got to throw it on here. Now, I was actually thinking of not putting it at number one because it's still a shooter. But here's the thing, guys. Fortnite is a very uniquely designed shooter. Other shooters down here are like either head to head or they move so ridiculously fast paced. But Fortnite, it's 1v1s. I don't know if you've ever fought against a John Wick skin, but they're a little bit more based on building and tactics and strategy of what weapons you have, what weapons they might have, you know, your positioning. That's really more the focus of Fortnite. Obviously, aim is still a factor, but I found aiming to work pretty well with the speed, the pace, and of course, with your tactics inside a Fortnite console. I thought it was fine enough, and especially with my history of playing competitive shooters on consoles from Halo, Gears of War, stuff like that. I thought it, I thought it works. You know, as a third-person shooter, it totes works, guys. Um, but Fortnite is number one, obviously, because it's just, it's just a beast, okay? It's just a massive game and the crossplay really helps when you're looking for a free game that anybody can play and you're probably looking on ps4 because you want to you know jam with someone co-op you want to play with them ps4 is very accessible if you're looking for a game that's incredibly accessible crossplay puts it way higher on the list you can crossplay with pc mobile can crossplay with pc and then that way i think you can crossplay like a ps4 player in your group and a mobile player and it's just like all sorts of weird with xbox player i don't think they can crossplay directly yet though but that would be pretty cool anyways that's a big reason why to play Fortnite, is because why not play Fortnite? Anybody can play it. It's a silly, crazy game getting ridiculous updates, getting ridiculous amount of love from its developers, from its community, from its content creators. Here, boy, 
I've been having fun with it. Please give it a shot. I know some of you guys are PUBG purists, or you guys think it's ridiculous, or it's just a copycat. I promise you. I don't know where this game came from, how it started, but where it is now is where no other game has gone before, and you need to catch this wave. That's gonna be the end of my top 10 list. Free to play PS4 games. There's so many that didn't make the list, but I just wanna say this, guys. PS4, there's a couple of reasons to buy it. Bloodborne, Horizon Zero Dawn, some really good single player games to play. And I think a really great partnership here is that PS4 and Sony, they've really focused on getting a lot of free to play multiplayer games. So yeah, buy the PS4 for Bloodborne, for Horizon Zero Dawn, but then also know that you have this huge library of free games. A lot of them didn't make this list and I love them dearly, like Hawken, Blacklight Retribution, but, you know, they're, they're really cool games, they're really weird, and they're actually more popular on PS4. So if you're looking to buy a PS4 because, you know, you might want this one game, but also look at all these free-to-play games I can play with so many different people, absolutely freaking lootly you should do it. I got an Amazon affiliate code if you want to clickety-clack that and buy a PS4 right now, jam to it, as well as support me a little bit. That'd be cool, I don't know, man. Um, but I just want to say, like, subscribe, all the good YouTube stuff, click the bell for a tell. That's pretty much it. Outro, out. Keep the hype alive, guys. Much love. See you in the next one.